You know, there was a time that I almost gave up. I was that close. Well, maybe that's not true. Maybe I did give up. It was a brutal year. I mean, brutal. It was the first year of my commercial office furniture business. It was money was coming in. It was coming in. A lot of it. Problem was, none of it was mine. Money come in, money go out. This is one of the reasons that I developed disruptive money. I learned a very valuable lesson that year. Well, several, several. And I got to the point where I not only considered a job, I had applied for a job, several jobs, and had interviews. One of the jobs that I applied for that was an early, because eventually they all offered me a position, which is so funny, was with Orkin. Yes, the pest control. It was some kind of salesman where I would be going to houses, crawling through crawl space. And, and understand, this was after I had left the boarding house and had been in the, the fancy to-dos and being an exhibitor at trade shows. and It was a fall, but I had to do what I had to do. So I interviewed. They gave me the paperwork for the physical. I go get the physical. Physical comes back. Background check comes back. They make me an offer. I go visit my boy Mario. And I tell him what I'm doing. He clowns the shit out of me. He's like, yo, 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 John, John, come here, come here. Glennon, tell John what you're about to do. And I tell John because John was his business partner. They owned an accounting firm. And John was just like, well, and then Mario was like, fuck that. You're going to be, you were a salesman. You were a neocon. You, you're going to go do that shit? Really? You can be like, oh, I'm Mr. Working Man. I mean, they were clowning the shit out of me. I felt some kind of way about myself. I was like, whoa. And I went home. I pulled out all my contracts. Started making phone calls. And I realigned my debt because I was on a ton of debt. And turned it around in about three months. I called up the working guy. I said, I can't take the job. And he said, what do you mean you can't take the job? I said, I just can't take the job. I can't do it. But thanks for your consideration. Thanks for your time. Then it was just crazy because the business, I did a lot of the turning around, but that taste of all of that debt, all of those account receivables, those huge, huge obligations in my name, so I started looking for other things, and that's what got me in the storage auction business. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is your circle is so important. The people that you hang around, the people that you confide in. I mean, I met Mario at Neocon. He worked for a telecom company, and we just became friends, and we're still friends to this day. Just saw him recently. Mario was a business person. Mario was about building those businesses. If I had the biological imperative of my family tree, this is how the conversation would have went. Whoa, you're getting a real job now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He done woke up. Glory, glory. He about to get a real job. And I had separated and divorced myself from those concepts. And if it wasn't for Mario, because like it was, it was rough. It was rough. I mean, some of you, you've been there. Some of you are there right now. But I had to really, really say, Am I doing my best? And clearly I needed that being ridiculed. 
laughed at, mocked, because I'm not even telling you. I mean, this went on for about 30 minutes. I mean, they were laughing so hard. They had tears coming out their eyes because they had seen what I can do. They had seen the things that I had built. And we were all on walking that same path. The people that you surround yourself with are so important. They're so important to your success because they're not going to do what you need done to be successful. They're just going to be those guiding lights, those points of reference, the Rubicon point. The, the when you know, I was in the darkness at that moment. I mean, I had just made a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar fuck up that I had to fix. And then I lost a bunch of money on that deal, but I fixed it. And I knew the customer was never ever going to hire me again, but I fixed it. And. When you are in business or you're developing a business or you have this family tree where there are no entrepreneurs. There's nobody that started the business. There's no one to say, hey, yeah, those first two, three, four, five, six years. Yeah, they're a bitch. But you know that pool I put in last summer? I paid cash. This house you come visit us in, me and your aunt Sue, oh, it's paid off. Oh, yeah, and that Ferrari in the garage is paid off. I work long and hard for it, but I can retire. You don't have anyone that's telling you those stories if you don't have that kind of family tree. And then when you don't have that kind of family tree and when you even when you're successful with it, even when you have measurable results, it still doesn't register. It's still looked upon as this mythical. I mean, it was a running joke. You know, uh, I actually told someone and they thought I was joking. I said, oh, there's people in my family that think I'm a criminal. He was like, what the hell are you talking? I was like, no, I don't have a job. They don't know how I do what I do. I've tried to explain it to them. And it's just like way over their head. I've tried to explain it. Uh, I've talked to people. I've put it out there. I've given the template. Don't want to drink that Kool-Aid. So when you are out there putting together your business, chasing your dream, you have to run with a herd of dream chasers. Because if you are an eagle with a bunch of peacocks or you're an eagle with a bunch of turkeys, you might be an eagle. You might be. But you're going to act like a peacock. You may be an eagle, but since you're surrounded by turkeys, you're going to act like a turkey. Because environment is stronger than anything. You have people who have these biological imperatives, family traits, physical resemblance, walk the same, have the same laugh. But when it comes to being successful, when it comes to putting together a life, when it comes to doing things differently, you don't have that kind of... Uh, biological imperative. It's about choice. It's about making decisions. It's about trying something new. It's about remaining curious. It's about having the courage to be yourself because it may be one of the hardest things you ever do in life. There are many people who live for others, walk for others, dress for others. Their whole life and set is set up for other people. And there's no wrong with service to humanity. But there's a lot that when you hurt yourself to make someone else feel better about themselves because you don't have the courage to stand up and say, I choose who I am. That's not your job. That's not your providence. That's mine. And you get this and then you're an eagle, right? And you start flying over those peacocks and you start flying over those turkeys. They take note. And, and they see themselves being left behind. And they're not happy about that. And they start throwing sticks and rocks at you, trying to knock you out the sky because they don't want to see you fly. They want you right there with them in turkey land or peacock land, doing what turkeys and peacocks do. They don't want you soaring in the sky. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no, 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 no. Because every time they see you glide, a little bit of something dies in them. Just a little bit of something. It's just 
they die a little bit because they realize they're eagles too. But they've been acting like a peacock for so long or acting like a turkey for so long that you can't tell that they used to be eagles. They've been covered with dirt and grime and muck, despondency. They've just been, they just said, fuck it. Or some of them, to be fair, never knew that they were an eagle. They were raised as a turkey. They were raised as a peacock. And they always felt odd in the family. Always felt a little strange, a little weird, like they just didn't fit in. But everyone was saying, I remember when you were born, you looked just like your daddy. You look just like your mama. And you look in the mirror and you go, but I don't look like them. I don't walk like them. I don't think like them. How can I be part of them? And one day you just accept your role as a turkey or a peacock. You just pack it in and you start doing what, you, what they tell you to do. And it gets easier. You're no longer putting up resistance. They feel comfortable because they've put you in a box and you've climbed in and you put the lid on top and you're all happy. And you're happy because you're accepted. You're happy because they accept you. They've defined you. But sometimes when you're alone and you're looking up in the sky and you see those eagles and you're just like, I could do that. Then you get scared and you look around because you don't want those others to hear you. You just be real quiet and a little tear comes out of your eye because, you know, you never, ever will fly. You know that you intentionally clipped your own wings. But you've been acting like a turkey for so long and you've been acting like a peacock for so long. There is no turning back. It's irrevocable. You're done. And then you, the resentment bills, the hate bills. You start attacking every eagle that you can see, whether they've done anything to you or not. It doesn't matter because you hate what you can't have. You hate it with a vigor and a passion. This is the importance of having the right circle having the right friendships, having the right mentorship. I have frequently on my other channel and this channel, I've talked about the fallacy of the traditional education system. I've had many people push back, but every year the statistical evidence continues to demonstrate I wasn't that off base, but people will still go gobble, gobble or whatever sound a peacock makes. They'll still do that because it's comfortable, yet painful. So when you're putting together your team, and if you have no one in your family, you have no, go to score, or if you see some business owner, I mean, it's gonna sound strange, but boldness works quite well in many different situations. Go to a business owner, and you may have to go to five, you might have to go to 10, you might have to go to 20, 25, and just say, look, I'm trying to start a business or I have a small business and there's nobody in my family to talk to. I don't want any money from you. I just want someone to talk to about business. Some people will help you out. They'll be glad to school you because you are just saying, hey, I just want to hang out. I don't want any money from you. I'm not trying to get you to buy anything. It's just I want to hang around other business people, other entrepreneurs so I can get the stink of turkey and peacock off of me. You, you, you just gotta get rid of that. You gotta be that forceful in putting together your escape. You have to be, because it is an escape. You are, it's a jailbreak. You're breaking out of prison because this is something else. Once the gobble gobble, they see that you were hanging out with other eagles, they're gonna talk about you. See Jerome over there? I don't know why he's hanging out with Jerome. I don't know. And you know, it's kind of funny. He does look like Jerome, but we know, you know, Adcock's Jerome's father. I don't know why he's hanging out with that eagle. I don't understand. We just don't mix. There's a long-standing feud between peacocks and eagles. 
We talked to the turkeys. They're pretty good people. They're good people. The turkeys are good people. But those eagles, they fly too fucking high. They be doing stuff, swooping down, grabbing fish, doing cartwheels and tricks in the air and shit. So, no, I'm not jealous because I can't fly. No, I mean, I can fly, just not far. I can't glide. I can't fly over mountains. I can't swoop into a lake and grab a fish or swoop down and grab a rabbit in full, full trot or full flight or full speed, whatever rabbits do. I can't do that. But I can be the best damn turkey ever. And I avoid those big, tall, two-legged things because, you know, around November, they get kind of ornery. But other than that, it's good being a turkey. It's great. I think. So they'll talk about you. They will try to sabotage you. And another thing that will happen as you start to fly, because see, what you're going to try to do is you know that you're an eagle. But the turkeys and the people, that's fam. They were there in the first grade, the second grade, the first grade. You go way back where they were there. So you try to keep the relationship intact. But when you come around, it's like, you've changed, Jerome. You think you're better than other people. And then your grandmother, she keeps tapping you on the shoulder. She keeps trying to get you alone. Then one day, just before she dies, she gets you alone. It's like, Jerome, baby, I got to tell you something. You want, that's not your mother. That's not your father. A long time ago, they were going to go up into the nest. And they got to the eagle's nest. And they were going to destroy all those eggs. And your father was getting ready to squash your egg and you broke out. And they just couldn't kill you, so they brought you home. But you're not a turkey. You're not. You're an eagle. And you should know the truth. You should go and be with your people because nothing but harm will befall you if you stay here. Because your, your, your feathers are coming in. You're starting to get your crown. Thanks for joining me today. I have something that's going to make your future incredibly bright, happy and more profitable. I am relaunching the Hustler Mindset Project on a new platform. It's something I've been working on for a few months, and I just wasn't happy with the user experience of just a video. There needed to be more. There needed to be a better communication system. There needed to be more interaction, and it also needed to be private. And I had to control it. So I thought, and I thought, and I thought, what can I do? How can I make this better? And I found it. And this jumps off this Sunday, which will be today is the 16th of July, 2015. So this jumps off July 19th. I'll be merging people over, <laughs> moving people over, adding people over to the new site. And we're going to do some things that are different. The Hustler Mindset Project, the original mission was to help people change their mindsets i don't care how much money you have i don't care how talented that you are or may not be if your mindset is fucked your life is going to be fucked this explains the attractive people who are maybe movie stars or take someone like kurt cobain who literally has the world by the tail but because the mindset is so crippled, it is so contaminated, they take their own lives because of the demons. It's just incredible because from the outside looking in, it looks like their lives are amazing. But because the improper mindset is in place, these people may be in a living hell. So once you understand that mindset's the foundation for everything. It is the critical, absolute, positively most important thing in your success. And 
you know, some people are like, well, well, if you have a rich billionaire grandfather, that's exceptional. That's atypical. I hate it when people use the exception as if it was the rule. It's possible, but it's not likely. For most of us, we have to change our mindsets. For most of us, we have to look at the world from a different vantage point to get certain benefits out of the world. And I'm going to do this differently. This program is going to be much, much different. First of all, I'm changing the courses up. I had this hybrid of business and other stuff, and it just was this hodgepodge, and it didn't really connect. It wasn't congruent as it should be. I've solved that problem. The very first course in the Relaunch Hustler Mindset Project is going to be Disruptive Money. Mad life skills. I don't care how much money you don't have. I don't care how much money you do have. If you don't know how to manage it, it's going to cause problems. Manage your money or your money's going to manage you. This is a truism. This is the reality. That's going to be the first course. And I'm going to revamp it because I had some stuff in the old Hustler Mindset Project that was the Disruptive Circus and that was a brand and this and it's like, no. So it's all going to come under the Hustler Mindset Project and it's going to be this course with this unique icon and language, well, an icon and screenshot and template and they'll be distinct, but they'll all make sense because then the next thing from disruptive money will be the economic crash course. But before I get into that, let me get back to disruptive money. What is disruptive money? Disruptive money is a system for you to manage your money properly before you get big money. There's a way that you set up your bank accounts. There's a way that you use your credit cards. There's some things just little changes that have big impacts for your life. That's disruptive money. It's going to be deeper. It's going to be better. And I'm going to give you a more authoritative vibe on how to make your money work for you versus you working for your money. Now, economic crash course. And the reason I'm creating this course is at one point, I don't know if it's still true. I didn't check before I did this. But Warren Buffett was sitting on $60 billion cash because he was waiting on the market to implode so he can swoop in and buy high value stocks and portfolios for the cheap. What if that happens while you're in the midst of getting yourself together? Well, the economic crash course. How what what, what should you pay? What shouldn't you pay? What credit cards should you keep? What credit cards you shouldn't keep? How do you manage this downward spiral? If you file bankruptcy, what can you do to keep as much as you can and still be within the boundaries of the law? We'll discuss all of that stuff in the economic crash course. And it's not about having six to 12 months savings. I know many people who had those scenarios. I knew a guy that got laid off. He used to work for Sports Illustrated on the swim seat tune. He got a serious package. He had a bunch of Apple stock. Two years, he was living large. He should have been getting a job or working on starting his business. Then he started selling stuff. And it was just gone before you know it. Because when you're not working, you have a lot of time. And what do people do to entertain themselves when they're not working? They spend money. Economic crash course will help you with that. Then the next course will be Disruptive Circus. Mad life skills. Simple things that I thought, but how to buy a used car, how to buy a new car, how to buy a house, how to rent an apartment, how to talk to a landlord, how to get a better break on your rent, how to sell stuff. That's going to be Disruptive Circus Mad Life Skills. Also, there's going to be, and some I'm going to tell you about a little later, but there's going to be two ways to pay for this, if you so choose. After that, 
becoming the boss. There are many people who are literally going to be forced to start their own businesses, to become the boss, to become that guy that will have to start a business, go from an employee mindset to a business mindset. You'll have to hire people. You'll have to fire people. You'll, you'll literally be the man on the white horse. We'll talk about that transformation. I went through it, and I'll tell you something, and it's a little embarrassing. For the longest time, I would always divide my money by 40 hours by 160 a month times 12. I was a business owner with a paycheck-to-paycheck mentality. And it's limiting. It is limiting. I remember the day that I let that go. I made more money in 30 days than I did in the previous year. The ability to do that was there. But because I was working on the paycheck-to-paycheck mentality, mentally, that opportunity could not come into my life. So becoming the boss is a very important course. Another course that's going to be under the Relaunch Hustler Mindset Project. One day business startup. This is going to be brutal. There are some people who just have to get a incredibly strong push to get moving. It's like a car parked on the hill. You got to push so hard to get it moving. And that's how some of these people are. They don't have the patience to wait 30 days, you know, to get something started. It's just like they got to get something started, got to get going so they can feel that their efforts have some level of validation. So that'll be the one day business startup. This is going to be a strategy course, creating business for fun and profit. There's so many things that you can do, like in Project YouTube. And uh, I will just let you know, the online B-School is not part of the relaunch of the Hustle Mindset Project. And this is why. Online B-School is going to be heavy, heavy concentration in certain areas. Literally, the whole month of July will be about YouTube and nothing else. The whole month. And then we're going to go to platform building. And it's just a different group of people. And that's another mistake that I made when I did the Hustle Mindset Project. I had CEOs hanging out with first time business owners or first time or people who really want to just get started. And it just didn't mix well. So now if you want the deep YouTube experience, the, on, the deep online building and business experience, you, you'll have to go to online B-School. But creating businesses for fun and profit is wild. And going back to Project YouTube. There is a section in that course that if you set up a YouTube channel, if you have a job, if you do it right, you can literally pull out. You can save thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on your taxes legally. No trickery, no crazy stuff, no offshore accounts, none of that stuff. It's just about knowing the law and how to use it. Next thing is. How to develop the right mindset. And understand, these courses, the the way that I'm telling you how these courses are coming is not exactly how these courses will drop once I I do it. I put it together. Because Disruptive Money, that's going to be first course, definitely. Then the order of the rest of these courses is going to change. Then the power of six. And I'm revamping that. I'm redoing it. Retake, just, just making it totally different. So that's going to be a complete revamp, and it's very, very powerful, and that's probably going to be one of the earlier courses because it makes you productive. You get more done per day. It's a very, very powerful course. Then at some point, we're going to talk about disruptive mating. The reason I'm including this course is that many of you are going to start businesses, male or female, and money makes you more attractive to the opposite sex, male or female, And then when you get serious with somebody and then when things don't go well and they have to leave, people for some reason want your money that they didn't earn. Or they want things that they're just like, oh. Disruptive mating is going to help you with that in a tremendous, tremendous way. Another course, tribe building. 
Then we're going to go with creating your sandbox. Oh, making a living without a job. I have a YouTube uh, playlist about that, but we're going to go deep with that. That's going to be guerrilla hustling. <laughs> it's going to be fun, too. Another course, Disrupt or Be Disrupted. It's a mindset course, plus there's some action points. And then Building Your Own Economy. Another very, very different course. Now, that's what's set up. And in my mind, because that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's going to take a while to put all that together, revamp stuff, rebrand it, and put it in there. So the plan is to work on one course at a time until completion and getting back to how you can benefit from this. You go through the Hustler Mindset Project relaunch. You're going to become a different person. You're going to be happier. You're going to make more money. You're going to have more sex. Because you're going to be a different person. You're going to be a high value, high energy person because you are working on yourself. You are creating a different you. You're building because your life will not change before your mindset changes. Going back to when I was operating on the paycheck to paycheck mentality, even though I didn't have to, it was just that was my mindset and it was limiting. It was keeping me from earning as much money as I could because I was thinking like an employee, 40 hours or a bad week. And then I was like 40 hours and it was just like, oh, I'm working for you know minimum wage. Really, really had to get away from that and started working on value, creating value, creating experience. There's going to be a lot of important tips in this course. There will be a ton of information that's going to help you. And I'm going to go deep. I'm talking deep. I'm probably going to put my mating process in disruptive mating because as an entrepreneur and you're working hard in your business, you don't have time to hang out at bars. So I essentially automated my dating life. And it worked so well that it was just, I'm spoiled. I am literally spoiled. I go out and meet people to keep my social interaction skills up because that's something you should never, ever lose. You should always be able to meet people, talk to people, ingratiate them to you, get to know people. That's a very, very important skill. You should, If you got it, you should never lose it. And if you have it, you should work to improve it. But during those critical months or first few years of building your business, you really can't focus on that stuff. You can't put 80% of your time into chasing women or hanging out, waiting for men to pick you up. You got to get busy. You got to work on your business. But like Janet Jackson said in that song, sometimes I get lonely. Now, if you can be able to have companionship and meet people, but it not take up a huge massive amount of your time like traditional dating because if you have a guy he goes out every week he meets women he, he polishes up his intros over time he's going to get better but he's going to invest a lot of money in clothes a lot of money in drinks and it's just going to be on and on and on we talk about different stuff in disruptive mating now with that the 14 and counting, because there will be more courses, but this this is the core. This is a good place to start. You have an option of paying $100 down payment and 20, let's say, I haven't quite figured it out because it's going to be between $19.95 per month and $39.95 per month. But you click on the button, you'll see it. Or you could pay hundred bucks a course because there will be the master course list where they'll just be this course then we'll move to this course and then we'll move to this course the new platform that I'm utilizing I can create this it looks just like a school so you'll have the master list where all the courses are on that list so you can just go boom 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 or maybe I'll just give you a coupon and you can go you know once again 
I'm leaving flexibility in there. But if you pay the hundred dollars down payment, then twenty four, you know, nineteen ninety nine to thirty nine, somewhere, because I'll pick a number, and I haven't picked it yet. Then you're good. You get everything. Now, if you don't want to do that, I just decided each course is going to be a minimum of one hundred dollars. That way, if you don't want to be on the subscription service, you don't want to do the down payment, then you can buy cafeteria size. It's like, I don't like this course, but I'm going to take this course. And you can do that. Also, something I learned from the last course. Automatic payments are nice, but we live in such a crazy world that remember when Target was hacked and Home Depot and Lowe's, then everyone had to change their credit card numbers. A lot of these systems have, they do have the ability for you to change account information, but it's its almost like it's buried in the mind like a diamond. So it became real challenging. It's like, hey, I need to change my card. This is happening. This is happening. I need to do this. And I just say, you know what? And this is something that I've been doing. You're going to be invoiced. The first $100 payment, you can just go ahead and make that. You're fine. And the day that you make your first payment the next month you will receive an invoice to pay whatever i decide it's going to be that way you don't have to worry about your credit card being on file if you got to change payment methods you no problem because you'll get an invoice and you can use this and you can use that so it will not be this automatic draft that really created a lot of churn and i should tell you if you're starting the course it's it can be an issue it can be a big issue. The bigger the course, the more people you have in it, the bigger that issue will be. You know, that will be your two ways to pay. And once again, online B-School is a separate beast. <laughs> it's a separate thing. And it will not be part of this. I might break it up where Project YouTube will be a standalone course. And you can buy that. And Project YouTube in the beta mode was selling for 300 bucks. And once once again, there's things in there that even if you don't make money, you will save money and put more money in your pocket. So I'm looking at doing that because I'm going to kind of really push the boundaries of this platform. And also, I wanted to keep everything congruent where, you know, it made sense. One day business startup makes sense with building your own economy. Disrupt to be disrupted, making a living without a job. All of this stuff makes sense because it's closely related. And that's how I'm going to keep it. So any other courses, uh, maybe next year I'll do the writing course or the audio book course. But those are heavy duty courses. That's not something you can study for two hours and be good to go. It's going to be very extensive, time consuming to do it right. And that's one of the reasons that those are going to be after I do Project YouTube and Online B-School. It, it's deep. It's very deep because I've had some people who were taking Project YouTube and they were just like, I had no clue it was this extensive. Because when you're putting together a YouTube channel, there's so many things that you have to do to be successful that no one tells you. Like this thing with the camera. There's many videos. There's a lot of accessories. You can make your YouTube videos with your iPhone. You can. And you can buy a laugh mic, spend a little money, get a, and set it up and use your camera to make your videos. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen as someone who's made a lot of videos with my iPhone. Your phone is going to get hot. You're going to wear your phone out quicker. Also, these things happen. You're filming and you're using the rear facing camera and you don't put your phone on airplane mode. The minute someone calls, your video is going to stop. <laughs> if you don't have a lot of memory, the minute you fill up your memory, your video is going to stop. So iPhones are great. If that's all you can do, wonderful. But when I'm telling my people, when we get to the course and the equipment, make it, get yourself, when you get to $1,500, $2,000, to get yourself a nice DSLR and a very good lens. You may spend just as much on the lens or more than you will spend on the camera. It's going to make a big difference. And the reason I'm telling you this now is YouTube can now accept 4K uploads. I've seen this. I checked this out today. They're de-indexing poor quality videos. If you have great audio, that can kind of get you by. 
But if you have a great video and suck ass audio, no one's watching it. Quality is going to be a big part of the future. And for what you, if you spend for, you know, just, just say $10,000 for your setup, including the computers, your mics and everything, but your channel makes a hundred thousand a year. That is not a bad ROI. And this is something else too. Once you buy your equipment, you'll be amazed at how often that's why I buy quality because you'll be able to use it with upgrades. If you buy quality, if you don't buy quality, you won't be able to do that. And also if you buy quality, you can sell that equipment for a good price and take that money to upgrade your cameras. So this is what I'm going to do. This starts Sunday. If you want to be part of it, you can hit the annotation. If you're on your desktop, you'll see it. You can hit the I if you are on mobile. Go ahead. Do your down payment. Understand you will not be. You won't hear from me again about payment for another 30 days. Then you'll get an invoice to you and we'll rock and roll. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully you enjoyed this little chat. I know that I did. And I'll see you in the next session.